Hi, this is Jijo and in this lesson, I'm going to deal with paragraph jumble specifically in the context of the cat. Now, if you look at cat uh, from 2015 onwards, this paragraph jumble questions were non-MCQ questions or you could call it the type in the answer type of questions wherein five sentences given to you which is a part of the paragraph and you have to rearrange to make it a coherent paragraph and what you have to do is that you have to actually type in that particular answer because you have to type in the answer with five sentences you have 120 choices it, it's, it, it becomes very challenging however in 2018 uh, cat there were only four sentences instead of five sentences to be rearranged this five sentence was the case from uh, uh, cat uh, 2015 uh, till cat 2017 2018 was four sentences even four sentences make it still challenging because you still have 24 choices to work with it used to be the case that in paragraph jumble questions you had uh, four options and when then there are options uh, you had at least have some certain clues for example the sentences let's call it the sentences four sentences a b c d and the first option says a c b d second option says uh, a c d b third option says b a d c and fourth option says let's say b d a c and here you start getting quite a few clues for example the start is either a or b and uh, and then let's say you start getting certain connections for example you figured out connection that uh, b has to come after c uh, B has to come after C, then you can say, okay, fine, this, 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 here B has come after C, here B has come after C. That's not the case in these two sentences. I could eliminate these two and further evaluate uh, option number A or option number B. You you, you could do all those all sort of thing, uh, things to, 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 uh, to, uh, to handle a paragraph jumble question. Therefore, paragraph jumble questions with options is not that challenging. But when it comes to paragraph jumble questions without option, when you actually type in the answer, it becomes becomes a, a really challenging task and what typically happens is that students normally ignore paragraph jumble assuming that I will anyway not get it right so why am I wasting time preparing for it let me look at other areas I think that's a bad idea even if uh, one there are four sentences and hopefully cat 2019 will also have four sentences even if there are five sentences it is possible to get at least some of these questions correct so my objective in this particular uh, session is to give you some input to ensure that uh, you have uh, you understand a process by which your accuracy in paragraph jumble questions uh, can get better so now this is how i'm going to take the session i will start with the context the context of course is in the vrc section i need to get a particular score to aim for a particular percentile and uh, given that i'm aiming for a score what role does paragraph jumble play uh, thereby getting the answer to this question how many questions from those four paragraph jumble questions should I get correct how many of those four what kind of accuracy do I need in paragraph jumble questions once you understand that we, we go on understand what a paragraph is after a paragraph jumble you have to you have to rearrange and, and, and create a paragraph now your understanding of what paragraph really is helps a lot in terms of getting uh, to the right answer for, for a paragraph jumble questions and then we move on to the process I need to have a common simple process when I deal with paragraph jumble questions that mechanical process that I'm going to apply to every paragraph jumble question so I'm going to suggest and give you a process that you can use uh, to sequence those paragraph uh, jumble questions and and then we'll pick a few examples and I'll look at how we can how we can apply that kind of concept and do the sequencing and we'll end by looking at a few CAT 2018 questions started with the context the context of course is that in, in verbal ability reading common section I'm aiming for a particular percentile I don't know what percentiles are you aiming but I'm assuming that you're going to aim uh, anything that is close to 99 percentile but at least a 98 percentile that would mean that you have to get a score which is about 70 plus uh, in the in the VRC section 70 plus score given the fact that each question carries three marks you have to get about net 23 questions correct and to get the net 23 question correct you have to look, you're looking at uh, uh, the total of 34 questions the distribution of the 34 question is that there are 24 questions from reading comprehension and there are these 10 questions from VA which are uh, paragraph jumble paragraph summary and odd sentence four questions from paragraph jumble uh, three questions from paragraph uh, uh, summary and three questions from odd sentence this has been the pattern from CAT 2015 till CAT 2018 and in uh, nine, uh, CAT 2019 hopefully this will be the same 
pattern. So let's uh, look at what is the score that we need. Uh, this totals to 10 questions total to 30 marks. And if you're kind of aiming uh, any score which is close to a 70, then from this 30 marks, what we need to get is at least get about 20 marks from those 30 marks, which translate roughly about getting seven questions correct. Mind you, paragraph jumble questions and odd sentence questions, because they are typing the answer questions, do not have negative marking. If at all there's a negative marking, the negative marking will be in the three question paragraph summary questions. Now, if you're able to get 20 marks from here, then the next task would be to get something 50 marks from those 72 marks in reading comprehension, which is like getting about net 16 questions correct. If you, if you can kind of increase to get 18 questions correct or 20 out of the 24 questions correct, then you start getting pretty much high percentile. But the point is that you have to get at least 20 marks from these 30 marks. Now, let's, let's uh, dive in a little deeper. We have paragraph jumble. There, there are these four questions. Paragraph summary, three questions. Odd sentence in a paragraph, three questions. Your first job is to ensure that to get all those three paragraph summary questions correct. And it is possible to do it. It's just one paragraph. You have to identify the summary of the paragraph. Options are given. And if you have anyway practicing reading comprehension, which has got multiple paragraphs, this has got just one paragraph, identifying the sense of the paragraph can be done. So one, one thing that you must do is to get all almost all the three questions correct. And then there is odd sentence questions where there are where you are given, actually given five sentences and one of the sentences do not belong to that paragraph and you have to identify that one sentence. So out of the three uh, 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 three questions, you must get at least uh, two of them correct. Now, to therefore, to get to close to about uh, seven, uh, your target is to get two out of the four questions uh, correct in paragraph jumble, at least two correct. If you can get anything more than two is awesome, but the bare minimum that you want to do is that if you are given four questions, type in the answer question paragraph jumble, you must nail at least two of them correct. Having understood that part, let's go and understand what a paragraph is. Now, if you look at the areas that are tested in the CAT, so you have reading comprehension and there is verbal ability. Under verbal ability, you have paragraph jumble, you have paragraph summary, and you have odd sentence. And if, if, if you look closely to these th three things, eventually, this is all about evaluating a paragraph. Paragraph jumble will ask you to rearrange and, and, and create a good paragraph. Paragraph summary would ask you to identify the essence of that particular paragraph. Odd, odd sentence will look at uh, that sentence which breaks the unity of the particular paragraph. And if you actually look at uh, reading comprehension, you have a passage and you have to comprehend the passage and there are questions that follows. But if you actually look at a passage, a passage is a combination of paragraphs. So you still need to evaluate, understand each paragraph, look at the connection between the paragraph to be able to comprehend reading comprehension. In one sense, therefore, if you look at CAT, CAT is the DNA of the CAT, uh, verbal ability section, is your ability to understand, comprehend, evaluate paragraphs. Now, given that, what is a paragraph? Paragraph is, at the end of the day, collection of sentences. But it's not just collection of random sentences. It, it's a collection of sentences with a certain purpose. So those things, are, there are three things that are inherent qualities of a paragraph. The first one is called the unity. The second one is coherence. And the third one is development. By unity, what it means that a paragraph must have a single focus or single idea. There is that one single idea the author wants to communicate. It could be a criticism the author has. Yeah, uh, it, it, it could be a claim that the author is making. Uh, it, it, it could be anything that the author wants to communicate to us in that one particular paragraph. Therefore, if there are multiple sentences in the paragraph, one of those sentences would is what, what probably you can call as a topic sentence. It could be the first sentence, it could be the last sentence, it could be any sentence, but there is that one sentence which is that, which is that topic sentence which gives you the idea of the particular paragraph. And now, there are other sentences which supports that one sentence, uh, which develops that one uh, sentence. So therefore, the other area that uh, uh, the another thing about paragraph is, is development. How, how the ideas are developed in the particular paragraph. Is it mentioned in a chronological order? Is, is it a cause and effect order? Is it, is it a claim that is be being made and the justification of claim given? And what is the development of those ideas in the particular paragraph? 
and and the paragraph is actually written for a reader to understand it therefore the paragraph must be coherent there should be a logical connection between sentences this is achieved for example by using logical connectors or transition word however for instance yet in addition or, or by using pronouns there there are there needs to be coherence uh, in, in the paragraph now these three things together is is what what helps you uh, solve almost all the questions of verbal ability let's take an example of a paragraph now this paragraph says marxism and buddhism might not seem to have much in common the former is a materialist social socioeconomic theory conceived by a 19th century bearded guy from the terror in germany while the latter is a religion originating from orations delivered under a fig tree by a gone peaceful intimidating character in what is india today historically and geographically they are as far apart as it gets but the core of their philosophical analysis of the human condition is astound astoundingly close it is so close in fact that buddhist metaphysics can complement marx's socio-economic philosophy as anthropologist claude levi strauss wrote in 1955 marxism and buddhism are doing the same thing but at different levels now let's evaluate this paragraph in terms of understanding the unity the coherence and development and and can you look at uh, the, the, the in, in this sentence what is the central idea of this particular paragraph and you actually see uh, uh, what is written in the paragraph it starts by saying marxism and buddhism might not have much in common but is astoundingly uh, astoundingly close uh, that 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 marxism and buddhism are doing the same thing but at a different level now if you actually read uh, this paragraph you understand the author wants to introduce the idea introduce the idea that marxism is very similar to buddhism and that's that idea of the single idea of of this particular paragraph in terms of coherence uh, you look at uh, the first sentence talks about marxism and then talks about buddhism and then they uses the word former to refer to marxism and the latter to refer to buddhism and the next sentence there is something that is commonly mentioned for the, uh, for both of them so use the word they and uh, the and, and there's a transition word they are actually far apart but uh, use the transition word to actually say that they are actually uh, close and to double that down use the word in fact uh, and and gives an example there so you you look at you, it, 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 there are clues within sentences Uh, by way of your pronoun that is used by uh, way of uh, sub substitute terms that is used or by of transition word that is used which, which connects a sentence to sentence right and if you look at development and you look at each of the sentence how the whole idea got developed so it started by saying marxism and buddhism might not seem to have, uh, 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 might not seem to have much in common it is probably to think that buddhism is not the same as marxism that is sentence number 1 and it goes on to sentence number 2 to the former is a materialist social economic theory conceived by the 19th century bearded guy in germany where the latter is a religion origin from orations so this says this gives a uh, uh, gives uh, justifies that particular statement as to give more detail uh, to say that marxism is probably is not similar to buddhism then in the next sentence he uses the transition word to 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 tell his point that point that he wants to say is while they are different they are actually pretty close uh the core core is actually very close the core of buddhism and marxism is very close and he creates a contrast by using this word but and then where where does he go to the fourth one and and is is doubling it down by saying that it's very close that buddhist metaphysics can complement the socio economic philosophy of marxism and 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 it further extends that idea and ends by giving an evidence from someone else you have already said some in 1955 then marxism buddhism are doing the same thing so that that's how we develop the whole idea and if you actually look at the central idea of this particular passage comes from this sentence here uh which says that they are actually pretty close so for, for while you're solving a uh, a paragraph jumble question you will eventually do use unity coherence and development to answer these questions and in fact while solving any of these verbal ability questions you you will you will you will have to use one of these things before i get to the next part i i want to deal with a common misconception this 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 these are this typically happens if you are a lazy test taker 
One of the common misconceptions that happens is that paragraph cannot start with words like but, however, yet, and so on and so forth. So you uh, you look at a sentence and there is a, one sentence which starts with but. You say that, okay, this can never be a start without actually reading what the sentence actually says. And this is, this is a problematic because it is possible that the paragraph actually can start with such words. Please do understand, uh, in a paragraph uh, jumble question, the uh, the question setter picks the paragraph from a particular passage. And now the pa this can be the opening sentence, the closing sentence, the so opening paragraph, closing paragraph, or it can be the middle paragraph, right? Now, if you start taking sentence from a middle paragraph, please do understand there could be connection uh, from a previous paragraph to this one. Like for example, what is happening in, uh, uh, here in this case by connecting the, this contrasting from what is probably mentioned in the previous paragraph. And uh, you see this uh, time and again. So you, you look at this particular paragraph, it starts with however. Okay, uh, uh, so that, that, uh, that, that essentially has a connection given to the previous paragraph. So one of the things that you must not be doing is, is solving this question in a lazy manner just by lo looking at certain words, uh, making some random uh, inferences uh, that you should not be doing. You should do, uh, you, what you should essentially do is uh, do this critical reading. Uh, and, 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 and if you can practice with this per perspective, you will start seeing that your, so your accuracy in paragraph jumble is going to improve. Now let's understand the process. We must have a process. So let's assume that there are these uh, four, four sentences that is given to you and you have to eventually rearrange this in and into the right order. And your first step as a, as a process, the first step as a process, step number one is to get this starting sentence. Uh, you, you know, you should know where you start. So if you don't get the start, it becomes very difficult uh, to actually sequence it. You have to get to the starting sentence and then the process number two is, to, is, is, is uh, number two is, is to then do the sequencing. See, it's important to get the starting sentence and then do the sequencing. This will help you uh, in, in improving accuracy. Now, the question is, how do I get the start? So, you, if you remember what we talked about paragraph, paragraph has got unity, paragraph has coherence, and, and there, is a, uh, there is development of ideas. So, when you read uh, these four sentences, what you want to look at are few things. One, in your mind, what is a topic? Or, or what is the idea that author wants to communicate? That's one thing. Second thing is that you, or, or, who, all the who's, who is could be oxygen, some person, the, the subject uh, under discussion. That's the second thing that you that that you want to focus on, and uh, a third, what about those subjects is under discussion? What what is the context? What are the what about the subject under discussion? And the fourth is all these uh, uh, transition words, uh, pronouns. Uh, to to give you some sort of clue in terms of how uh, 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 give you clues to eventually identify the sequencing and what the start is. Now let me take an example and and uh, to help you understand the process. Now here is a question from CAT 2017. There are five sentences here, so eventually you have to go one, two, three, four, and five. And our first step is to get the start. The best way to get the start is to eliminate. You start uh, looking at, el eliminate all the things that you think cannot be the start. Okay, let's let's look at these sentences. Uh, then let's start with the first sentence. We already have a subject under discussion here, which is the scientist. Scientists have for the first time managed to edit uh, genes in a human embryo to repair a genetic mutation, fueling hopes that such pro procedure may one day be available outside laboratory conditions. Okay, great. The you, you, what, is, uh, what are the scientists up to? The scientists uh, is editing genes in human embryo uh, to, uh, to have a certain objective done, which is to repair a genetic mutation. That's what the first sentence says. Uh, it's, it seems to be a good starting sentence. Uh, uh, it's kind of introduce a topic. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of keep, keep this sentence on hold. And let's look at the next sentence. And this uh, sentence talks about the cardiac disease and there's an article here which talks about the cardiac disease what what seems therefore suggests that there could be a logical antecedent 
uh, of, of if there is any any other cardiac disease mentioned somewhere else here and then you see that this and uh, this sentence too is connected to that particular cardiac disease uh, this says the cardiac disease causes sudden death in otherwise healthy young at least and affects about one in 500 people uh, overall and this is actually talking about what this particular disease uh, does and this uh, what this particular disease does okay and this is very very unlikely that this is going to be the start so this is going to be the unlikely start uh, of a sentence because it's actually reference to a particular cardiac disease and that cardiac disease could could have been mentioned somewhere in this paragraph at this point i should also tell you that it's also quite possible the disease can be mentioned in a previous paragraph and the reference can come in this particular paragraph so I'm, I'm just suggesting that is very unlikely that this is going to be the start I'm not completely saying that this can never be the start I'm just suggesting that this is very unlikely to be the start and then the next one correcting the mutation so here here the mutation has come back again so we are looking at a genetic mutation and this also talks about correcting the mutation and that it talks about correcting the mutation and that that requires this logical antecedent so there is a genetic mutation here and then the article the so it seems suggest that the this particular sentence should come after sentence number one anyways let's 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 read this further correcting the mutation the gene would not only ensure that the child and we have one more uh, mentioned there's a mention of the child and again article the is used which means there has there could be a logical answer antecedent so if there is any child mentioned anywhere else I know that this sentence is connected to that particular center the child is healthy but also prevents transmission of mutation to future generation and this is also unlikely that this particular sentence can be the start uh, very unlikely because there are two too many uh, uh, sen uh, the words which requires logical antecedent from a pre previous sentence uh, the next one is it is so we have already have a word it something is caused by a mutation in, in a particular gene and and here we have a child a child will suffer from the condition even if it inherits only one copy of mutated gene and then you see that there is a child and and there is the child there so here we can we can I can it can probably write by the side that your sentence number four after that the sentence number three has to come I'm not suggesting that it has to come immediately it could come immediately but just that three is position is after fourth position and anyways because there are these uh, there is a word it here so it, it is also pretty unlikely to be the start in results announced in nature this week scientists fixed uh, so we have we have scientists fixed a mutation that thickens the heart muscle a condition called hypotrophic cardiomyopathy and now there is this hypotrophic cardiomyopathy mentioned here now I al al also see that there is a there is a cardiac disease that is there in number two and that's 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 a disease that's only disease that is mentioned uh, in the whole whole, whole whole paragraph that it would seem to suggest uh, that the, the, the cardiac disease that is referenced here is actually this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and you can, can also then say from there that there is another connection that you look at that uh, 5 and then then 2 right now now the only thing that you have to figure out is between sentence number 1 and sentence number 5 which is uh, which is the starting sentence and if you actually look at sentence number 5 this 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 has gone and uh, said uh, something more specific that uh, uh, talking about something more specific as to what scientists did the first one is a more general statement whenever you have a general statement to a specific statement a general statement is is uh, is, uh, is a much better statement uh, to start with and therefore it, it it has to go to a one the starting is a one and if you look at the starting is a one you have this uh, sentence number one and sentence number five connected by way of these are the only two places where the scientist is mentioned uh, the only two places scientists mentioned so the, and, and if you look at this uh, child and, and a child these are the places where the chi child is mentioned so three and four can be a solid group one and five is a solid group and and then five and two is also a solid group because of the uh, because of the reference to the disease and, and therefore the order therefore would be you go with one one and five is a solid group when we know that five and two is a solid group and then you have four and three to be the solid group so you, the answer to this question is one five two four three now it would probably seem to you that I've taken a lot of time to solve this question but mind you if you practice paragraph jumble questions a lot of them this this thing will come very naturally and you should be able to quickly solve these questions 
right and now let's try and apply this to a few examples right now to look at sequencing and uh, this is this is in terms of uh, development of ideas uh, and also in terms of the coherence these are the two things that that is going to play a role in terms of figuring out what the sequencing is a few things that you can uh, look at is a noun and then go into a pronoun uh, I can probably uh, for example say if I say Ram and then I say he so there is a he refers to Ram and that's one kind of sequence that can help you can also have another example of a, a full name uh, to a surname. So for example you have a Rohan Tandon and then it says then it goes on to talk about uh, Tandon or Rohan uh, so so you'll say that from a full name you normally introduce a full f full name of person and then continues the discussion with the surname. Third chronology you have let's say year 1900 to 1923 to 1950 usually whenever people talk about certain year that has to logically uh, flow in, in in the earliest to the latest that's how usually that works the third thing that you can look at is chronology the fourth thing that you can l look at is a general uh, to a specific so a general to a specific is I can make a general claim claim for example I would say alcohol should be banned uh, and then I'll get into specific I'm making a general claim that alcohol should be banned and then I can probably start giving reasons because it is a primary cause of domestic violence or maybe whatever okay I'm not I'm, by the way I'm not suggesting that alcohol should be banned I'm just saying it's an example all right so you typically have a, a specific general to specific it's also possible to move from specific uh, statement to general uh, usually there it, it ends by probably making conclusion by using the word does or so it is also possible but more often than not if you look at writers or paragraph or light of passages usually start from general and moving to something that is specific another thing that you can look at are transition words or, or connector words so yet uh, however uh, in addition they, they, these are all words that help you get the ideas together and especially in sentences where the, ch where the change in tone for example there is the author talks about something that is negative then then uses the word but and creates a transition to a positive Wh whatever happens after that uh, a particular sentence which has got a uh, transition word but or however and then talks about positive whatever happened after that must be positive so you you need to get all the negatives together and all the positive together um, you can y use quite a few of these things to look at the sequencing let's take question number one so you have one two three four let's try and rearrange Bartel Godwitz their avian neighbors at the nearby lake can fly 6,000 6, miles to New, New Zealand a minuscule target in the context of such great distance so f here here the here the talk about someone's avian neighbor so this particular sentence requires uh, uh, an antecedent who, who, who are they uh, he, he's talking about one particular bird probably Bartel Godwitz someone's avian neighbor so we need to have someone else to be discussed here and the whole discussion also is talking about their ability to fly 6,000 miles okay so it is unlikely that this sentence is going to be the start and uh, you have the second sentence Am among other species there are incredible navigational feats that seems to defy reality unless we invoke the existence of magnetic sense the one thing that you see is this part of the sentence is a very general claim okay which 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 is usually uh, a good sentence to kind of start the paragraph with but we'll hold hold on uh, this sentence for the time being because you have this one word which talks about among other species and there could be a logical antecedent that that is required we need to have species let's say x and then this talks about other species it could very well be possible that uh, this could be the starting sentence the other species are mentioned in the previous paragraph but because uh, this this uh, second part uh, of, of the sentence is a pretty general statement and and the here is talking about some specific uh, bird and this could be a we'll put this on hold this particular sentence to be on hold and and then the next one starts with the word bird perhaps the most well known example most well known example is a homing pigeon so we have uh, we have uh, uh, another bird that is discussed here homing pigeon and, and something about that bird is discussed there and if you actually look at the fourth sentence is actually talking about for instance that's an example so these are the, uh, the three and four 
definitely cannot be the start so what we now understand among one two, three four where where one three and four we are talking about here is one homing pigeon bartel got bits arctic turns here you can look at three birds and uh, this is a much uh, broader statement. The rest all seems to be some example of the fact that all, all, all the author is uh, talking here about navigational feats, ability to fly, and you, you see, start seeing everywhere that that uh, 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 starts seeing everywhere. In the first one, they can fly, uh, they, they can fly, and they, they have just returned home, returned from feeding grounds. They they, have, they can fly. So it it uh, so this uh, is a uh, it's a two has to be the start. So one, once you figure out two has to be the star, then you, then then you uh, move on to the other sentence. Now in the next sentence, this is the if you look at the fourth sentence, it starts with an example and start with an example of these Arctic turns, and other two sentences. This has got a transition here and gives another example, and this one talks about another bird uh, because of their avian neighbors. So you cannot start with one. For sure, we, the next one cannot be one for sure. So the because the sentence number two has not talked about any other bird, uh, so there is no connection that you'll get. Okay, it cannot be three. Uh, so therefore, the next sentence definitely has to be sentence number four. Now, if you go to sentence number four, then then the only thing that you now evaluate is where to place the sentence number one. One we would look at. We need to have reference to uh, someone in the nearby lake. Now, the reference can either come to the homing pigeon. Okay, the reference can come from Arctic turns. Okay, this is what probably makes the sentence number one, place in sentence number one, a bit challenging. Now, there are two, three clues that you can uh, look at. W one clue that you see is that this is there is a plural word. There is a plural word. And this one here is talking about homing pigeon. That's a singular word. Arctic turns is a plural word. So it, it makes a lot of sense to get these two to be connected. So you have four, then going to one, and then actually going to three. That's 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 one way to look at that connection. Uh, you can also look at connection from this this angle, from a very logical point of view. This this discuss specifically about they have just returned home from feeding grounds. They're flying from point A to point B. These are okay, flying from six thousand miles to New Zealand, flying from point A to point B. Okay, this uh, but here here this one talks about uh, dutifully delivered post medication contraband intelligence across distances span thousand mile location they have never visited above. This talks about homing pigeons they really do quite a few things, but four and two talks about birds which is traveling from point a certain point A to certain point B. So logically also four and one is connected. So either using grammar you can make the connection or we are use, using logic and make the connection and get it to two four one three. You can pause the video solve it. And check whether you got it right. He starts uh, talking about uh, this one. Talks about the creator of the group. Urgently spoke for a uh, need for action, sounding the call to join and cost and get involved. The one thing is that this has got this request an antecedent. This request an antecedent, which means this is very unlikely to be a start. This is very unlikely to be a start. And then the next one talks about the name of the group. Again, this group call could be translated no to the demolition of the stock found. So, since there is a reference to some group, okay, uh, this this also pretty un, uh, unlikely to be the start. And here's talk about a popular group on Facebook hosted a collection of people very much opposed to the destruction of historic found in downtown Copenhagen. And now this is a sentence which is a likely uh, start. We can put it on hold. It's a good, very general statement. Introduces a popular group, and this talks about na probably name of the group and what the creator wants in that group. And if you look at uh, the last sentence, almost overnight. Participation in the cause got viral. The participation cause got viral. Members joining and getting the word around. Members are joining. Why are members joining? There is a sounding for call to join, and from there the members are actually joining. So here you, know, you can also see that this this also cannot be the start. This also cannot be the start. So which means the starting sentence is is, is three, and definitely we see the connection from one to four. We need a connection from one to four. That's a connection that uh, probably pretty solid connection. It should probably be one four because somebody called, sounded call for action and they joined. And it it also see that three to two make a lot of sense. It talks about a group, describes what the group is, and then moves on to talk about what the creator wanted, creator of the group wanted people to do. So this connection goes three to two, then one and four. Right. Let's look at the th th third question here. This is one, two, three, four, five. Now this has got five sentences. 
and a five cent is maybe uh, difficult uh, to look at but we'll still use the same process we want to look at the start and see what happens okay let's start with the first sentence uh, first before I see the transition word there is a uh, there is however a gap so he's talking about a certain gap but at least a uh, uh, billion years uh, years between the formation of the earth and these these first sign of a living organism is talking about these uh, first sign living organism so this requires a logical and antecedent unlikely to be a star star now he says cyanobacteria okay so we have a hero here a uh, cyanobacteria probably that is a living organism is still abundant on earth today are still abundant on earth today and we don't know what to do with this sentence we will keep, keep, keep the sentence on hold okay and this is there's a the principal kinds of bacteria so when it's talking about the the principal kind of bacteria this also needs to have a logical antecedent somewhere else the principal kind of bacteria where cyanobacteria you suddenly see the cyanobacteria is the one that got introduced today uh, to introduce here and then uh, two uh, so the, the no for sure that two has to come after uh, three because the introduction of the cyanobacteria actually happened in sentence number three so therefore we can also say that two cannot be the start and it's very also unlikely that three has, can be the start because it has got some reference uh, using the, the article the uh, so this cannot be the start so let's look at four a small amount of evidence mostly still controversial records the presence of bacteria okay here is where the records the presence of bacteria and perhaps other microbial life in archean rocks from australia and south africa and it, and then it says okay fine the principal kind of bacteria uh, of a cyanobacteria it makes a lot of sense there so four can be a good start in in fact four uh, we'll put four on hold it can be a good start and also you see that there's a presence of bacteria the principal kind of bacteria were cyanobacteria so you also see that after four we need to get to three i'm not suggesting immediate i'm just suggesting that the order of four three and two will be like this so four and then three and then two it could be that nobody is sitting here it could also be possible that some people may be sitting here but at least it has to go from four to three to two and this seems to be a good starting sentence at some point of time uh, during that interval and is referring to some interval so this uh, this also cannot be the start which would then mean that the starting point is definitely four and here is where you start evaluating what can happen now we, you have a statement number four talks about uh, that interval and you actually look at that interval or the gap is actually mentioned in uh, in number one so one and five is a solid connection 1 and 5 is a solid connection 1 and 5 is a solid connection you also start seeing now so if I uh, remove uh, let me just remove this thing if you start seeing now these three is talking about one particular aspect about presence of a certain bacteria and there is cyanobacteria 1 and 5 is actually talking about uh, life arose on earth in the form of relatively simple self replicating molecule there has been a gap between A and B and there is somewhere between here is when life arose that's what actually discuss in 1 and 5 so 1 and 5 is an entity which has to be uh, uh, together for sure which actually makes 4 3 and 2 as an entity which has to be together and and you actually look at uh, 1 requires uh, the word however a gap uh, the one actually talks about these first signs of living organism one requires the introduction of four three and two uh, so which means the order has to be four three two and then one five let's look at the fourth one one two three four five and you can just pause the video and and look at uh, look at solving this question there's one thing that you notice here you see that the full name here uh, the surname this talks about he he in surname so you can say that five uh, in this case should be the start okay five in this case should be the start and uh, and if, if you start reading what is mentioned in five five says that uh, uh, Hector Bellerin another Spaniard for whom there was one questions about suitability one question about suitability uh, this in fact is actually t talking something negative about that particular gentleman and then is uh, you look at each of the sentence it was less than a year since Bellerin was abandoned per Mertesacker to endure a grueling ordeal in a bruising Arsenal defeat so this one is also talking about a negative statement and and but if you look at the third statement and he contribute uh, plenty in attack too thanks to the binding speed and smart choice so bindings uh, uh, so this is uh, so thanks to blinding speed and smart cho choice this talks something that is positive and you have this word 
and and uh, and plug and plug in attack to there is so this sentence requires an antecedent he is good in something else he is also good in attacking okay if you look at third one at 20 at the third at 20 he offers an ample scope to get even better another positive statement and uh, and if you look at uh, fourth Berlin has gone on not only prove he can cut in the Premier League, but uh, but that he is uh, cut about uh, most of these defender. There are this there this also talks about a positive statement. Whenever you have a positive statement, negative statement, and this is a negative statement, you want to put all the negatives together and you want to put all the positives together, right? Which means that uh, the next sentence in this case must be equal to one. And out of these uh, uh, sentences two, three, and four, what actually gives the transition is, is the fourth sentence. Berlin has gone on not only prove he can cut it in the Premier League, but that is cut among most of the defenders. And and then you see this connection here as well. And he can contribute plenty in attack too. He's good good with defence. He's also good with attack. And then he can do even better uh, in the future. So therefore, the order therefore goes five one, and the transition is created by sentence number four, goes to two, and then goes to three, five one four two three. Now let's look at a couple of CAT two thousand eighteen question and see if we can apply this uh, process there. You can pause the video, uh, solve, solve it, and see whether you got that right. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay. Now it starts with this transition word, but now we have another group. So this talks about we are be having another group, the unwitting enablers. The another group is unwitting enablers. Now we need for this sentence to uh, this sentence obviously has a logical antecedent, and we are talking about a group here which is unwitting enabler. So we need some other group, group X, and then he talks about here group Y. It is possible. That this could be the starting sentence, and the other group was mentioned before. But if we find any other group mentioned in this uh, particular uh, sentences, either two, three, or four, we know that this has come from the same. Uh, the, the logical antecedent uh, is is some somewhere here. Okay, but we'll keep this uh, uh, sentence and say that it's very unlikely that uh, it's very unlikely this is going to be the start. And if you look at the second sentence, democracy and high levels of inequality of the kind that have come to characterize the United States are simply incompatible. This is a pretty general statement. Okay, this talks about a group. This this is actually we'll, we'll keep the sentence on hold. Ah, uh, believing that these people, so we need some people. These people are working for a better world. They are actually at most chipping away the margins, making slight course correction, ensuring the system goes on as it is uninterrupted. So this one uh, needs to have some. Uh, antecedent because he talks about these people unlikely to be the start, and then he says very rich people will always use money to maintain their political and economic power. We have very rich people will always uh, use the money. Are there the other group? And he's talking about having another group. Now, if you look at uh, uh, this, uh, this one, very rich people always. If you look at sentence number four, very rich people always use money to maintain the political and economic power. We have these unwitting enablers. Uh, these people are working for a better world. A very general statement is two. At least we know that it has to start with the two. Okay, and now. And we need to understand who are these people. Is it, it is reference to rich people or is it reference to unwitting enablers, right? So there are these two group that is mentioned here. That would then mean, uh, for sure, that this uh, this 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 other uh, we have another group. The references come from very rich people, and we have another group which which are these enablers. So we it has to be four to one. Now we have to evaluate where three goes. But well, is three connected to four? Uh, or uh, or is three connected to one? Let's be believing these people are working for the better world. They are actually doing something negative. They think they are working for a better world. They are actually doing something negative. So which means that word unwitting, unwitting means they are not deliberately doing something. Unwitting labelers, people who think they are doing good, but actually they are not. And therefore, this is a good connection that is happening. So so after the the tree is actually explaining. These unwitting enablers. So it would mean that uh, this uh, this should go from four to one and and to one and then to three. And if you got the order, you got two, four, one, and three. Let's look at the next one. Okay, see if you can answer this. Let's look at question number two. You can pause the video, solve it, and see if you got this right. So we need uh, four sentences uh, to be arranged. He talk about the eventual diagnosis, and the eventual diagnosis was skin cancer. And after treatment, all seemed well. Okay, and it saw so that everything was okay. After treatment, everything sab acha tha. All was seeming well. But this does not look like a starting sentence uh, discussion. There has to be certain problem, and the problem was diagnosed to be skin cancer. 
So and the next one talks about the violin player. Uh, the violin player didn't know what it was, nor did her GP. So again, uh, this is this has got some connection to a previous uh, 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 sentence. Unlikely to be the star. Then a routine. Then a routine scan showed it that come back and spread to her lungs. And this cannot be the start. The starting point is started with a lump on Kathy Perkins' index finger. And here is where the person is actually uh, introduced, and and she uh, and she is the violin player, right? So the one thing that we know for sure is that the starting sentence has to be four. The starting sentence is four, and the next thing that we want to look at, where will it go next? Okay, and it started. It's it started with a lump. So and the eventual diagnosis was that is a skin cancer. The uh, in the index finger, the violin player didn't know what it was. It makes logical sense to move from four to two. Okay, the violin player didn't know what it was, but here the three is actually talking about it had come back and spread to her lungs. What, what, why for it to come back? It has to go away, and and therefore the going away is mentioned. Treatment all seems well. For it to come back, things have to be well. So, so you know that the kind of after one, then you have three. So this arrangement will be four, two, one, three. Now. You can solve more questions uh, on your own. Uh, see if you're able to get accuracy of at least 50 percent. That means if you are solving four questions, you should get at least two questions correct. If you can uh, do more, it'll be awesome. But the starting point is to get two questions correct. I will post more videos on other areas of, of the CAD. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it. Thank you very much. This is Jijo signing off.